Now, as a good instructor, I should stop right here and say, hey, you know, I want you to finish out this code because really I gave you the, everything that you need if my data equals to R. But um, I'll continue on just because I don't know what, like the last example was pretty easy to figure out. This one's pretty equally easy, but again, I, I, I really like the script. I use it all the time. So, Okay, so what I'm going to do is grab this, right, and paste it. The only thing I'm going to change here is blue. B blue and blue. Oop, I saw another one too. I got to change. Doesn't matter what order these are in because these are in the code. Uh, but to keep with the whole theme of RGB, I might go like this. Put this one in between it. So this one's green. Perfect. So now we have three nested if statements within an if statement. It's almost paradoxical, right? Now, what if we do this? Let's take all this code. If I can get the, my greedy little pause on it. So let's take these three nested if statements all the way from R to right here, put our cursor here and paste it. What if we say minus 10? There's our code. Not too bad. So as a new student to writing code, you know, just know that it's it's like playing chess. You just got to know what to copy and paste and what to Frankenstein together. And as you go on, it's going to become easier and easier. And you don't have to do much typing. In fact, it's, it's a challenge. Um... I usually challenge myself by thinking, how can I not type? And as long as you play that little game in your head, programming is not all that bad. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, let's move, I'll move this over here. Put this over here. So let's try the R first. So R. Okay, it's blinking, but it's not like staying on. And you notice that um, the values of 10 keep are going away every time. All right, so there's something in the code that I forgot to mention. So if R is here and R is also subtracting, that would be bad, right? We don't want R here for the last one. We want E, which is right next to R. And we don't want G, we want F. And then lastly, not B, but V. So those are the, the last three inputs of the keyboard for the negative 10. Also going to save this madness. Okay, let's move that over there again. Try it one more time. So R... Yay, it stays. E. Turns it off. R, R. 
E, E. Good. So G. Sweet. F, F. Good. Okay. Blue, blue. V, V. Sweet. Everything works. So R, R, B, B will equal some kind of purple. We add green to the mix. It starts becoming white light. So values that go across, let's say I had 20, 20, 20, right? We have supposedly perfect white light. But if you did some experiments on it, you find that it's not quite there yet. Very cool stuff. So if we ever re needed to make like, like an analog write statement, let's say I needed to make a purple LED. Well, technically, um, I can get it to purple. Let's say it's 20, 20, 20 0, 20. And I can write an analog write statement just like this. I'll just do this below here. So I don't need this entire script in, in some other example. If I just needed a purple LED, I would write it like this. 20. 0. 20 and then R green and then blue so this script is useful to make other scripts and I would just write that out as long as everything hardware wise was hooked up yeah and if you had a lot of these uh, another thing that you can do is if you have a lot of the um, 22 ohm resistors, again, that's just the lowest value I have. It might not be the, the right ones, but they're the lowest value, and I'm not really worried about blowing the RGB out. You could put three of these next to each other and write one to be green, one to be blue, and one to be red, right? And you would know which values to add to those. Let's say that the red one is going to have an analog write of 20 hooked up to it. So instead of having an RGB LED, you could have just a blue, a green, and a red LED. And you could do some color mixing that way. It would take a lot of these, but you could do it. Also, you can mix color values across multiple RGB LEDs. Yeah, blowing your mind, right? So if you had that going on, you can make an ultra bright, super intense white light, or you can make very finite adjustments on um, all the colors and mix them together across three of these. So hopefully you find that useful and just some ideas what you can, where you can go with it. Try challenging yourself and thinking about the color of light in the morning and the color of light at night, okay? Or dawn and dusk. What values are those? What do they play out on the atmosphere? And then try to mimic them via um, an LED. All right, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video where we now start to look at writing a third-party application uh, to change the values of RGB uh, without using this over here. Okay. So, see you there.